Maybe you've already watched my video on who should train new restaurant employees. Maybe you already knew all about what I shared in that video, but maybe you're still a little foggy about how to pay your trainers in your restaurant. Stay with me and I'll give you my thoughts on this very topic in just a minute. I'm Dave Scott Peters, restaurant expert, coach, and creator of the Restaurant Prosperity Formula. I've been coaching restaurant owners since 2003, and I'm really glad you're here to learn. Today, I want to talk about how to pay your restaurant trainers. But before I do that, if you like tips and tricks like this, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and oh yeah, that bell so you're notified when my next video tip comes out. And for more tips and tricks for running a profitable restaurant or to hear restaurant owner success stories, make sure you tune into my podcast, Restaurant Prosperity Formula, found on all the popular podcasting services. Let me start off with a disclaimer. Without a budget and an understanding of where you're located, your state's minimum wage, your restaurant style of service and price point, I will not be able to give you a specific number when it comes to what we should pay our trainers, but I will be able to guide you. Got your attention? Great. For starters, you'll need to think about paying your trainers a higher hourly wage when and only when they are actually training new hires. And that goes for both front of house and back of house. That means that if I have a trainer, they're not in a trainer wage 24 seven, seven days a week, whenever they're in your business, when they're actually doing the job of being a trainer, that's when they get a better wage. But again, for both front of house and back of house, we often forget about the back of house. When it comes to say a server, Understand the person who is training someone else is not only taking on the responsibility of training, right? And it's work. It's real work to train a new hire, but they're also going to be significantly impacted financially because they'll either be serving fewer tables or won't be serving tables at all. So keep that in mind when you start thinking about, oh yeah, I need to compensate my trainers. So you need to think about one, rewarding them for helping you train someone into becoming a great team member. That trainer, that training process, that is so important to getting new hires off on the right foot. And two, the tips, if they're a front of house person in a full service restaurant, the tips they could be missing out on, that needs to be considered as well. So how much more do you have to pay? How much higher a rate do you have to pay this, this employee? right? Well, it's dependent on your state's minimum wage. And if you're in a state with a tip credit, if it's a tipped employee, because we have states where there are still two thirteen an hour, you could pay a server $2 and 13 cents an hour because they make up the state's minimum wage by getting tips. And we've got tips like California or, or states like California that have a uh, Los Angeles, I believe no tip credit. And it's a $15 minimum wage. So imagine a server makes $15 an hour plus tips. So that can, that's going to change our range from 213 to 15 to starting point to what we need to pay extra based on where you are. So this is where it gets a little hairy, but I'm going to give you some guidance. When it comes to back of house, it's much easier because you're going to pay them a buck or two more an hour when they're training somebody to make sure they feel appreciated because training a new hire is not only time consuming, it can be challenging and you want to take care of your trainer. You want to make sure that you know, they're going to take care of that new hire. They're going to do a great job and get them started on the right path. See, when it comes to paying more for your trainers, just keep this in mind. If they're a non-tipped employee, maybe a buck or two, again, to say, I appreciate you. If they're a tip position, depending on the state you are and where the minimum wage starts, that may change things from being, say, a, a two thirteen an hour state. Maybe I'm going to pay five, six dollars an hour, where then a fifteen dollar an hour state where there's no tip credit, I might pay a dollar or two, just like I do with the back house. Just make sure you are training your trainers and you're appreciating them with a little more money. I think that's important to get people started on the right foot. If you're tired of not being able to leave your restaurant because no one else knows how to run it, I want to make sure you know it doesn't have to be that way. You can leave your restaurant. It is possible to build a team of people who know how you want the restaurant to run with trained and responsible people in place. You can give yourself time away. What would you do if you had time away from your restaurant? Would you sleep better? Would your relationships improve? Would you feel more relaxed? 
These are all things you deserve to experience as a business owner. It's why we own our own businesses. If you would like to learn how to own a restaurant that doesn't depend on you to be successful, click the link in the description to watch a free video to learn exactly what you have to do. Also, be sure to subscribe to get my weekly tips and watch these two videos to get more information and guidance for running a successful restaurant.